Got it? So in this example, we are going to see a supplier code is a natural key and a supplier key is a surrogate key. There is a difference between a natural key and a, and a surrogate key. Let us see how it is. Technically, the surrogate key is not necessary. Why we say that is, when you are able to identify a customer uniquely in a, in a table, you don't need to give a surrogate key. When the surrogate key comes into picture is, when you have more than one customer with the same name. That is where the surrogate key comes into picture and it is more relevant for the type 2 dimension because type 1 dimension you will have customer entry only one time. That's it. If there are more information adding to the customer it will just update it or add as one more column but there will not be a second row in it. That is the type 1 dimension. So type 2 dimension. When you see the type 2 dimension, I am going to compare and contrast between those two so that you get the actual difference when you need a uh, surrogate key and when you don't need a uh, surrogate key. You will see that now. So type 2. Method tracks historical data by creating multiple records for a given natural key in a dimensional table with a separate surrogate key and or different version numbers. Here is the here, here is the real information. Now, someone wants to I uh, actually researched on uh, uh, Ganesh Bhaktula <laughs> because this guy kept on changing names. You see a terrorist because he kept on changing his name from last 20 years. Why is this happening? If, you, if they wanted to identify, if they build a uh, uh, criminal record for me, uh, they wanted to uh, identify every and each name I have. So they will create more than one entries in the same table. Saying when he is born from 0 to three months. His name was Baby of Parijatam. There is no other name. Boy Baby of Parijatam was only in the register. From, there is a little disturbance from one of you. So from the month three, for till the age 15, he was his name was Ganapati. After that it changed as Ganapati Bhattala as per the register. And then from there it went as Ganesh Bhattala, but nowhere in the register. But still there will be date identifier saying when the change has occurred periodically. So that is what he is telling a type 2 dimension. Or else let us make, a, make it even simple. If a product like SAP data services, it is actually a business objects product. So there will be definitely business objects when it is been introduced. There will be an introduction date for it. And when it is turned over to SAP data services, there will be one more entry. The product code is going to change. That is where you need to introduce a surrogate key. Surrogate key, what it will say is, it will index. The product business objects has only one natural key, which is, let us say a number 1001 is the product key for business objects. After SAP has taken it away, still the natural key of it is 1001 only, but we will add a surrogate key. A surrogate key is just an indexing number. It is a sequential number. That is, has no meaning actually. It is just a sequential number because there is a data entry, it is giving a serial number to it. It can be 1, surrogate key 1, the natural key is 1001. Surrogate key 2, the natural key is still 1001 because the, uh, the, the product is business objects. The uh, only change is it has become SAP business objects on so and so data. That is a type 2 dimension. If you look at the data now, you will understand it. I will show you the data. With type 2, we have unlimited history preservation as a new record is inserted each time a, a change is made. So whenever there is a small update, you will have a new entry in the dimension table. That is the type 2 dimension. Let us see as an example. Sup supplier key, supplier code. ABC, supplier name is Acme supplier and the state of the supplier is California. And if you are maintaining it as a type 1 dimension, if the supplier changes his state, let us say, he moved from California to uh, maybe Illinois or he moved from California to Texas, you will have only the same entry, only the California will be updated as Illinois. But let us say if we are maintaining a type 2 dimension, the data is going to look like this. Supplier key is changed, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, which it becomes a surrogate key here. Above, uh, in, in the type 1, it is a natural key. In the, in the bottom, it is a surrogate key. 
the supplier code is still the same abc supplier name is still the same supplier state has changed ca and illinois the version has changed 0 and 1 this is the type 2 dimension make sense guys you will have to understand type 1 and type 2 clearly only then you can design an etl job for this very important if you still have any kind of a confusion i am not going to skip this topic i will have to make you understand type 1 and type 2 else we cannot perform an etl job perfect so type 3 dimension type 3 dimension is actually the combination of uh, 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 of type 1 and type 2 how i say that is in type 1 actually you are maintaining only single record for a customer whereas in type 2 you are maintaining the full history of a customer type 3 is you will maintain only recent history of a customer you will not maintain everything you will come to know that SAP business object data services earlier name was business object but you don't know that business object bought it from APTA that you will not have in your table you are maintaining the most recent history, not the full history of it. That is type 3 dimension. Method track changes using a separate column. Type 2 has unlimited history preservation, whereas type 3 has a limited preser history preservation, as it is limited to the number of columns degenerated for storing historical data. So how many ever uh, uh, columns you provide, here there is no more one uh, addition of a row, it is only an addition of a column. So in here if you see this is the type 3 dimension, supplier 1 to 3, supplier code ABC, supplier name is Amki uh, supplier company or original supplier state is PA, effective date is 2004 but current supplier state is IL. So it is one record, it is shown as the same record but it is giving the previous and the current, previous and the current. If Illinois is updated uh, and he moves into Texas, Illinois become the original state, Texas become the current state. You getting me guys? That is type 3 dimension. Question hour. We almost reached the end of uh, end of the session and also we are reaching the end of day. So today our time did not, did not permit us to uh, talk anything about SAP data services. But I will be happy uh, if at all you got the essence of data warehouse, we have already spent around 8 hours of time looking into database and data warehouse. So, any questions, guys? I will talk about material what I will provide. I will talk about videos. We'll, I will give you a case study which you can go through. And before I say it is end of show, it is questions for you. Any no, 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 no. If someone told you that, it is wrong. You cannot apply anything between a, a source uh, source data and by the time you move it into staging. Your data should be untouched. Believe that. You should not make any single transaction except sometimes you will make a filter condition. The filter is also based only on a date. Why I say that is? The business person is the one who determines how much history you want to maintain in the data warehouse. So the only filter he will ask you is, I have in my source system 20 years of data, but I don't want the entire history. I want only from 1999, which is 12 years of history. So there you will put a point and filter it out, but you will not at least touch the currency, not at least touch the customer name, no standardization, nothing. From source to state, you should not do anything. You want the raw data, then you get it into your play, play, play there. It, it is, it is, it is as simple as buy the vegetables from the market, cut it into your style. Do not get the cut vegetables where you don't have an opportunity to again uh, make make your uh, style. Some disturbance from one of you. Uh, hold on Sri Devi one second some disturbance from one of them because uh, remaining guys cannot uh, follow guys uh, please whoever okay now it is silent uh, Sri Devi please go ahead no 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 Sri Devi first thing understand here our source system has no dimensional modeling it is an operational system 
we are not moving data out from a data warehouse we are getting it from a source system which is an operational system there is no there is no history in the operational system there is no dimensional modeling in the operational system it is all denormalized data you don't have dimensions and facts in in source system you have it as just a transaction that's it so don't get confused dimensions are we are talking only in data warehouse which is our target so a type 1 type 2 type 3 exists in our target not in the source all we are talking is when we move a transaction from source system into our data warehouse how do you want to build your dimensional table whether you wanted to build it in type 1 or type 2 or type 3 i can give you a little more uh, idea on that so that you you get some clarity data warehouse you load history initially but you will also be loading incremental everyday transactions which means first when i implemented my data warehouse in 2010 january let us take sri devi has an account in bank of america she opened it in 2009 and there were 100 transactions till 2010 by the time i went into data warehouse so 100 transactions are moved into my data warehouse they are existing i have a customer called as Sri Devi as of 2010 january now it is 2011 between 2010 and 2011 Sri Devi has moved in, in into different states she was in texas she moved to california later she moved to new york that is where we are determining whether we wanted to maintain Sri Devi as a type 1 dimension or a type 2 dimension if you yeah if you are maintained in type 2 dimension then i will have the history saying sri devi is a customer since 2009 2010 she was in texas 2010 october she moved to uh, california and 2010 december she went to new york every information will be noted there that is type 2 dimension but if you go back to source and check it, source will have only most current information that Sri Devi is living in New York, that is only it has. And if someone wants to maintain it type 3, type 3 is, as I told you, it will not have the entire history. It will have only just the previous information. Saying, Sri Devi before coming to New York, she was in California, that's all it is. There is no history of uh, Texas. There is no history of India. In a dimension table, can we have a numeric value? Perfect man, good question. I never touched that point. Yes, you will have a numeric value in a dimension table. The only numeric can be a surrogate key. If you are maintaining a dimension table, in a, in a, a dimension table in a type 2 dimension, you will have a surrogate key which is a number. A surrogate key is never advised to have an alpha numeric or a character. It will always be a number. But as a dimension table is not additive. You cannot add those numbers. You can add only measurable quantity and facts. The dimension table will have a numeric but it is just an indexing number for it. And there are some dimension tables just to mention which is kind of a currency dimension table. It has a number saying it will have a dollar and all the currency conversions. It will have euro, it will have rupee, it will have uh, uh, the yen, it will have the dinar. Every current currency conversion will be stored in that dimension table. But you cannot add them again. So there are going to be some numerical numbers in a dimension table. but you are not going to add or you are not going to take an average or you don't do that uh, uh, in a dimension table. That's all for today guys.